Arthur Miller is here. It has been over 50 years since his first play, The Man Who Had All the Luck, opened on Broadway with works like The Crucible and A View from the Bridge. He has become one of the great names in American playwriting. His landmark play, Death of a Salesman, is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary with the revival on Broadway. Arthur Miller joins me now for a conversation about life and career. Later, we'll be joined by the star of the revival, Brian Dennehy. I am pleased to have, though, one more time at this table and for a conversation, Arthur Miller. Welcome back. Uh, good to be here. It is. Last time we did this, we did a radio. You'd, it was a radio thing we did. You remember that? Because of a radio play? A yes, right. Revival of a that radio was play. Terrific. You are writing, uh, you've just premiered uh, Mr. Peter's Connection, yes? Uh, that was then, yes. Yeah. How long ago was that? Oh, it's uh, got to be eight, ten months ago. Okay, so that's within a year. Yeah. Now you've got Death of a Salesman. I mean, it's like a Arthur Miller renaissance, isn't it? Well, it's nice. It is nice. Yeah. Nice because? Well, I'm just happy to see my stuff on the stage again here. And... Uh, They've done about, I think, five of my plays this year in New York. Yeah. All My Sons and A View from the Bridge, Mr. Peter's View Connection. View from the Bridge got great review. Yeah. And a couple others. So, it's been interesting. Did you, you once told me in a prior, it's hard for me to ask any question I've not, never asked you, as you well know. Uh, and some you'd just prefer I not ask again, <laughs> as you well know. Uh, a view from the bridge, you said, might be your favorite. Didn't you once say that to me? Well, it depends a lot on the productions. If the production is terrific, then I think that's about the best thing I've done. And that production was especially good. Good. Uh, Anthony LaPaglia played yes. the man. And uh, it was just a, an extraordinary production. So when that happens, you get the feeling that... Uh, you couldn't have done any better than that. But I've had a similar experience with the, All My Sons, which was beautifully performed here yeah. uh, last year. Death of a Salesman is a play about what? Hmm. Well, they asked me that when I was writing it, and I said uh, it's about a salesman and he dies. Uh, it's hard to capsulate that that play. It's about uh, the United States, it's about a man, it's about an economic situation, about a family. Uh, it's about a life. And uh, to try to uh, boil it down to a sentence is beyond me. Some say it's a, about the corruption of capitalism. Well, yeah, accepting, and it is, accepting that uh, when it's played in a place like China, well, still where I directed it. Is it still playing there? Someone said to me, it's still playing. God knows, they don't yeah. tell me anything. Yeah. Uh, Not the same production, but some variation. Well, they, they have their own st uh, theaters. When it's played there, I, uh, I'm sure that they make a different thing out of it. I, as a matter of fact, uh, CBS had a uh, crew there when I directed it, and when the uh, opening night came, uh, the crowd came out of the theater and they found one f young guy who uh, could speak English. And they said, uh, asked him how he liked it. He said, oh, it's wonderful. He said, it just shows you that Willie Loman is right. He says, everybody wants to be number one man. So... Uh, it depends what continent you're on as to what it means to you. And uh, in that case, it was quite the opposite of what I had originally intended. But... Uh, Some could say Biff Lohman is right. It's about coming to grips with the reality of your own life. Well, from his point of view, that's what it is. From Willie's point of view, it's quite different. It's a love story, basically, between a father and a son. Uh, in fact, it just occurred to me a couple of weeks ago when I was talking to one of the actors that uh, everyone in this play loves Willie. Everybody. Uh, but accepting Willie. And uh, 
I think basically its appeal probably is that it is that kind of a story. It's about the uh, loss of love and the finding of love again. One of the great moments in the play is when Willie realizes he's loved. Well, that's of course what the architecture of that play is, that uh, both he and Biff, his son, are lost people and find themselves more or less at the end by recognizing their love for one another. And that's fundamentally what the story is. He kills himself because he realizes he's more valuable dead than alive or some other reason? He wants to give of himself. He wants to dedicate himself. He wants to pour out his love for his son. And in his circumstances, he knows there's no way in this life to do that. And so his great triumph will be his giving his insurance money to his son. That's the saddest thing about it to me. Well, it happens. Yes, it is sad, but uh, it's just following that tale to its end. The original title was not Death of a Salesman. I thought it, I should call it, uh, I was going to call it The Inside of His Head, but it was very awkward. And uh, I dropped it soon after I thought of it. But uh, the original set, as I saw it, would be a gigantic uh, interior of a skull. And the whole thing would be played in there. But uh, it didn't take long to see that that was not really what I should be doing. So uh, Joe Milzina, who was one of the great set designers of America, designed this marvelous set for it, and uh, it was by no means the inside of a skull. It was a very wispy house that looked like it could be blown away by a breeze. And uh, it was a great triumph, that set. Uh, but the, the basic play would be the same anyway, no matter how you did it. You were how old when you wrote this? 31, 2? I was 32. You won a Pulitzer Prize for it? Yeah. At 33? 32, 33. Yeah. Changed your life. Well, it did and it didn't. Uh, I, see, I had written about eight plays before Death of Selden. And uh, I had been preparing for that play for all those years. What I started mean? writing plays in college. What do you mean preparing for that play? You mean everything else, is, as Churchill said when he became prime minister, everything I've done has prepared me for this well, moment? That play, formally speaking, is a kind of invention. Uh, the idea was to make everything happen at the same time. That is, the past and the present working uh, together, instead of stopping a play and going back. There are no flashbacks in the play, and yet the, the past is always with us. Uh, just as it is in life when you're talking to somebody and you think of something 35 years ago. Uh, to make that happen on the stage took a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of feeling as to how to make that happen. And it took a lot of writing over the years, uh, working through straight realism, through poetic uh, theater, even some verse plays that I was writing until I came upon that form. Was it instantly, critically uh, praised? Yes. It wasn't mixed. It was no, almost it was universal. Everybody, everybody had the same reaction, including the people who read it, excepting for a few who didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how it could be done, how the audience could follow the story because part of it is taking place uh, in the past, and then there are, when they were in the past, we're thinking of further back in the past. So there are double, uh, two, two kinds of past. 
It's very complicated, but I've made it very simple. That's the architecture you talked about. Yeah. Do you see a lot of difference in those actors who interpret Willie? From Hoffman to Denny? Well, you know, it's like uh, listening to music. If you hear a, you know, one orchestra play the same piece, and it's pretty damn good, you hear another orchestra play the same piece, and it's quite different. But it's also good. Uh, I've seen now probably half dozen Willies, uh, and I wouldn't, couldn't dismiss any of them. But they're all quite different. I mean, George Scott is, is a different man than Dustin Hoffman. And Dustin is a different man than Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell was a different fellow from Lee Cobb, etc. cetera. Uh, there are different lights on the different personalities. Like Dustin was quite, he was a little authoritarian man who was giving orders to people. And uh, then he is more of a great force. Physical force. Physical force. He, he looks, he towers up there. Uh, Scott was a bit uh, angry with his life and his self, etc., etc. So uh, each one brings a different... Lee Cobb was uh, always verging on being sorry for Willie. We had to continually remind him that he can, could be sorry for himself. So on. It's, it's maybe the most stupid question I've ever asked, and I've asked lots of stupid questions. Would you change any of it today? There'd be no reason to. <laughs> <laughs> it, all, it all works pretty well. You don't look at it and say, you know, I was writing it today. No. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's as good as I can do. It's as good as you can do. Yeah. But so is A View From The Bridge. Well, they're different, they're different works. A View From The Bridge wasn't really a, a, an attempt to create a tragedy uh, based on a Greek scheme. Is Mr. Peter's connection as good as you can do? Sure, but it's a totally different piece of work. My point is, that are you being judged since death of a salesman? Have you been, in a sense, judged by that play? If Arthur doesn't well, reach this bar, then he's not as good as yeah. he ought to be. Well, inevitably, because the, there's more empathy in Death of the than anything else I've ever written. You're 83 now, you were 32, 33, so 50 years ago when you wrote this. Yeah. Well, uh, I think uh, you, you are more, more swept away by Willie than anybody else. Athletes lose a step, they lose coordination between hand and eye, they lose something physical and something even mental in terms of anticipation. What do playwrights lose with approaching age? Sleep. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't sleep. Not as well as I used to. Really? Yeah. Well, when, you know, I'm an old man now. Old men don't sleep well. Uh, you get up. So therefore you're kind of sleepy during the rest of the day. Well, you got to take a nap best. now and then. Yeah. Sure. But is there any reason that you can't be as good as you've ever been? There isn't really. If I have the, uh, if, I'm, if I'm lucky enough to catch the lightning again, uh, I could do it. What does that mean, catch the lightning? Well, a writer, I think, walks around with an iron bar in his hand pointing to heaven. <laughs> hoping to be struck by uh, that electricity. And uh, if you are, it's a great piece of luck. Although maybe it's, it's more than luck, but it seems like luck. So where's the luck in Death of a Salesman? Where's that the light? everything came together at the same moment. That, uh, you see, I would never have dared, probably, to have written that play four years, three, four years earlier, because it took a lot of confidence to
to propose that play uh, for an American audience or any audience, basically. Why? It was a lot of because you're raising questions that go to the core of the American psyche and the American that, experience. Yeah, the content, but also the form of it. See, uh, I'll tell you quickly. I won't mention his name, but uh, well, it was one of our great directors who gave the producer a thousand dollar investment. That was a lot of money at that time for my next play after all my sons, because he loved that play. And when he read Death of a Salesman, he withdrew 500. And he was a very, very intelligent man. Was it Lila Kazan? No, no, Kazan directed my play. Yeah, I know, but, I thought uh, maybe. There was another guy who, uh, he couldn't follow it. Now, it seems impossible now but uh, it was an invention at the time, and I don't think uh, a couple of years earlier I would have dared to do that. But it clearly is a play be that doesn't just speak to its own time. It doesn't just speak to no, the 50s. No one never it's, knows that. Well, it speaks can't. to every generation and every time and every country. Look at the success in China. Well, you can't. Because the themes are universal. You can't anticipate that, you know. Yeah. I mean, are you sitting here with me tonight saying a part of of the creative thing, whether you're painting a portrait or writing a play or making a movie, it's something beyond your own control as to whether it becomes a great piece of art. It's not just how much you pour out. It's absolutely true. There's you some X factor that has nothing to do with it beyond your range. I think that's, that's the case. Uh, you can never know, especially in the performance art, which, which depends on actors, or in the case of music, on composers, on, the, on the musicians and conductors, you can never know where that's going to land. It may just, and incidentally, when we did it the first time, we were prepared for anything, that they would just sit there and not know what the hell it, the whole thing was about. Uh, it all seems impossible now, but uh, I can tell you that uh, there was great apprehension that they would never follow this uh, because of the way the story is told. Have you changed or added new ideas as to what it means and what it says? In only so very subjectively, I can see certain the origins of certain ideas in the play better now than I could then, but that's all personal. It's just, I can see because what... Because of your own exper life experiences, it somehow might well, speak to you? your memory improves over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. <laughs> uh, I'm looking here at, at 50th Anniversary Edition, Arthur Miller, Delphi Salesman, uh, 50th Anniversary Edition, with a new preface by the author. There you go. Uh, Brooke, Brooks Atkinson of the New York Times said, at the time that Death of the Salesman made its debut, in 1949, one of the finest dramas in the whole range of the American theater. Robert Watts, Jr., New York Post, easily the best and most important new American play of the year, something to make strong men weep and think. Gibbs of the New Yorker, a tremendously affecting work told with a mixture of compassion, imagination, and hard technical competence. You don't often find in the theater today. Saturday Review of Literature, one of modern theater's most overpowering evenings. My goodness, if I'd read all that stuff when I was 33 years old. Didn't hurt. We'll but, be right, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was about to say that it came after all after about 10 years of work. Mm. This was not a play that uh, I invented overnight. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll talk with the star of Death of a Salesman now on Broadway, Arthur Stays, and we'll have more conversation about this extraordinary play getting rave reviews again on Broadway.